share their successes with uh, with other people as well. But you can see uh, President Obama sitting here shaking hands, and, and he, he will be going. Whether we have personally experienced a family member battle with addiction or watched as a friend or neighbor struggled on the path toward recovery, each of us have experienced this heartbreaking epidemic in one way or another. Our certified call line specialists have helped nearly 300 people struggling with addiction find the services they need to begin the road to recovery. We have a lack of resources. We have an epidemic that we haven't done anything about and it's been neglected. So I welcome the President here to talk about this issue and give us the basically. He's, he's able to give us uh, the attention that this issue needs. My substance use disorder took effect the day I traded two burned CDs for six prescription painkillers. I didn't grow up with a desire to use drugs. I didn't even know what they were until I heard kids at high school talking about them. But when I heard my friend broke his toe and wasn't taking his prescription, curiosity took over. For many years, the road to recovery seemed out of reach. A life of substance use seemed my only route. Opiates were my lover, my teacher, and my best friend. They overshadowed all that was important to me and distorted the faces of those I loved. I challenge each and every person here to do your part in creating a recovery-ready community. We need to cling to the audacity of hope because treatment is effective and recovery does happen. It is with great pleasure that I introduce the man who has inspired us to seize hope since his first candidacy. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of our great nation, Mr. Barack Obama. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Everybody, please have a seat. Have a seat. Thank you so much. Well, hello, West Virginia. Go Mountaineers. It is great to be back in what is clearly one of the most beautiful states in the United States of America. Uh, one of these days, I'm going to finally try a two doors biscuit. <laughs> well, when I came into office, I started studying this issue of what's called opioids. And I was stunned by the statistics. More Americans now die every year from drug overdoses than they do from motor vehicle crashes. And West Virginia understands this better than anybody because this state is home to the highest rate of overdose deaths in the nation. We neglect our marriages. We neglect other children in our home who are thriving because all of our attention is focused on addiction and substance abuse. We know that you learn more between the time you're born and three years old, then you will ever learn the rest of your life. You are a sponge at that age. And so the more we can invest in early childhood education, prenatal education for parents, uh, home visitation uh, with at-risk moms, and we know who, who they are. You know, if, if, you, if you're a poor teenage single mom, who maybe doesn't have a lot of support, then you are just much more likely uh, to not know how to express the love you have for your child effectively, even if you love them just as much as we love our kids. But you just don't have the tools. So, uh, so that uh, is got to be an emphasis 
at the state and local levels. That's where we can really make a difference. But it, uh, us being able to target at-risk parents, new parents, young parents, that can be extraordinarily helpful. One of the, uh, the, the useful things about this form is we're all vulnerable. But it, it's almost like uh, if, if, if you're healthy and you get sick, you have more you know, antibodies and, and resistance. And if you're poor, or, or if your body's already weakened and you get sick, then you're more vulnerable. Right? There are some communities we know that are more vulnerable, and the kids there are more vulnerable. And part of what I hope this discussion does is to remind us that just as it could be Malia or Sasha or Carrie's kids or any of our kids, uh, those, those kids who don't always look like us and don't live in the same neighborhood as us, they're just as precious. And, and their parents are... I think a trauma-informed community and an open discussion about where these problems are going is the first step in addressing why people are using drugs in the first place. And Mr. President, you're absolutely right. What happens in those early years in reaching out to those families who we know are at risk and devoting to the kind of resources that we would need to is the, really the first step, I think, in really truncating this. Because if we don't, what we're going to be doing 25, 30 years from now is having the same discussion.